Thank you for watching the Tank Museum's YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe. Now what we're going to do today is the CT20, the Oxford Carrier. It's quite an unusual vehicle. It's, uh, there's probably very few left in the world. In fact, there are only 400 to start off with. But it's quite an interesting vehicle, all the same as, as they always are when I'm talking about them. Bound to be interesting. Um, now Oxford, was, they were built by Wolseley's. They actually started out in 1943. The idea was to replace the Universal Carrier and the Lloyd Carrier with this one vehicle. The drawback was they couldn't find an engine for it, not in Great Britain anyway. So they decided to hold off building it until the end of the war. It appears in about 1945, built by the Wolseley Motor Company, which I think was in Birmingham at the time. And um, you can see the similarity with the um, Universal by the sort of suspension it's got. The only trouble is, and I've never figured this out, is how anybody managed to get inside it at all, climbing over the side. Of course, they were a lot younger and a lot fitter, but even so, it can't do you any good jumping off this thing and landing on the ground. But that's how they were arranged. You've got steps to get you up there, but there was no other way in but over the top. It was basically built as an APC, as a personnel carrier. It was also suitable for towing anti-tank guns. It would tow the six pounder or the 17 pounder, or you could have a three inch or 4.2 inch mortar stowed inside it instead if you wanted. So it was quite a versatile vehicle. A few, only a very few saw service in Korea. Now because they couldn't get the British engine for it, they ended up getting a Cadillac V8 and putting a Cadillac V8 in the back. It's back here somewhere. It drives, firstly, into an automatic gearbox, um, a sort of uh, hydromatic system that they had. And that in itself then drives by a shaft through a clee track steering system. And clee track is a braked differential steering system to the front sprockets. It's a most unusual layout of a vehicle. Almost all British vehicles at that time would arrange to drive at the back, but not this one. You've got to drive from the front just to make life difficult. And that's how it worked. Just a, a few of them built like this to start off with, and then the whole lot. They built 400 in all. A few, as I say, saw some service in the Korean War. And there's one preserved in Korea, in Pyongyang. It's in a museum there, and it's one they captured from us. So uh, they do exist, but they are very, very rare in this country. So uh, if you want to see one, this is where you have to come, in this dark and gloomy place. This particular one was fitted with an experimental hydraulic steering system, which explains all this extra plumbing at the top. It's not there on the normal vehicle. They were about flush here. They had a crew, the usual crew of two or three, and then as many men, I think it was nine, that you could get inside it. It was armoured up to about six millimetre thick, which is nothing really, but that's how they were done. And it took a, 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 an infantry party of nine men who had to, as say, leap over the side if they wanted to get out in a hurry. It was the only way. It weighs about eight tonnes altogether when it's full of people. And that was the Oxford carrier. Now this is the Cambridge carrier. It was actually built by Rolls-Royce themselves and there aren't that many vehicles in existence that were built by Rolls-Royce. Now this was only produced in very small numbers as prototypes. It didn't last but we've got one and thank goodness for that. It's nice to be able to show both types. It's uh, really in a way an updated model of the Oxford slightly improved and with a different suspension but that's basically what it is it's powered by the rolls-royce b80 engine which is the eight cylinder inline engine driving through a merritt brown c5 transmission which gives it five speeds and um, is linked in with the front drive sprocket again we've got this layout of the rear engine and the front drive sprocket which is quite unusual in a British vehicle, but um, it's quite a, an unusual vehicle. It's got torsion bar suspension. Probably the first British vehicle to have torsion bar suspension. We were very late in adopting it. We 
never have adopted it for tanks, but for, it's now done on most vehicles, apart from tanks. But um, it was in this case one of the first to be fitted with this type of suspension, so it gives it a different sort of look. It also has a different designation. It's FV400. They've done away with the old CT and other forms of initials and gone on to FV, <coughs> which is now pretty well universal. It's for most military vehicles have an FV number. FV400 or 401 was the basic troop carrier. What we've got here is FV402, which as you see is fitted with an armoured superstructure. It's actually in the OP or observation post roll, which is why it's fitted with aerials all around and so on as well. Um, and it makes quite an interesting layout as far as vehicles are concerned. They had a top speed of about 35 miles an hour and really drove quite well. But the thing wasn't popular. They were not adopted by the British Army. They liked the suspension, but they wanted a bigger vehicle. And the result was FV-432, the armoured personnel carrier. That was the vehicle that came into production, rather than this early version. This particular one was actually first discovered down at um, Lulworth. It was going as a hard target. At the time, it had been modified to be a, a launcher for the Malkara missile. But it only lasted so long like that, and it was going as a hard target to be scrapped. And it was snatched by an officer on the camp who knew what it was, was painted up and modified to look like the old FE402, which is what you see now. So it does make it quite a, an unlikely vehicle for us to get in the collection at all. But quite a good, if you like carriers anyway, quite a good vehicle. But uh, well worth looking at in a bit more detail. We have a fantastic selection of books, models, clothes and other gifts on the Tank Museum online shop. When you buy from our online shop, you are supporting the Tank Museum charity. And that means we can carry on caring for our collection and producing this content. If you have supported us already, thank you very much. Subscribe and do keep watching.